The PlayStation, a classic. Millions of people around the world enjoy this spectacle from the mid to late 90s. But with its popularity also came a downside. Owners became careless and reckless when it came to these. A prime example is this unit right here. This is a later model, the 9002. The previous owners did not care for it too much. It's absolute filthy on the outside as well as the inside. The buttons are stuck and the inside, well... The biggest concern as well with these PS1s might also be the broken lens unit. I had the chance to not only buy this unit, but also this one. And this one. Today we're picking one of the three to clean, which is the non-yellow 9002 unit. First I want to check the status of the unit itself. I hook up the power cable, as well as an RGB SCART cable. Oh boy, even the power button is wonky as hell. Well it turns on, that's a good start. Let's pop in a disc which came with the unit for free. Ugh, even the top lid won't stay properly closed. There it goes. And uh, yeah. That's a faulty laser for you. Time to fix all this nonsense right here in this video. I am going to deep clean, refurbish and lubricate the complete unit where it's needed. I open up the PS1 by removing the screws which are conveniently marked on the bottom by arrows. Well, that's a lot of dust. Nothing seems really out of the ordinary here. No leakages and no swollen caps on the power supply. I can see that there's a mod chip installed in here, taped down with some scotch tape. Nice. Let's blow out that crap with the air blower to get better sights of what we're dealing with. Now with that done, it's time to unplug all the cables to get to the center of the unit. The PS1 is a pretty simple console once you get the hang of it. And now to move on to removing the metal plate. Revealing the heart of the unit, the PCB with all its video and audio chips that make it happen. Blowing the crap away again and as you can see, there is a mod chip installed in here. I have no clue which version, but that scotch tape has to go. I also removed the PCB to get to the other components that need cleaning. This unit is so simple that it works with compartments. The controller ports are their own unit as a whole. The same goes for the power supply unit, which is an absolute breeze to uninstall. Another round of blowing out the crap. The eject button isn't functioning properly, so I take out the unit as a whole for cleaning. And off comes the bracket that holds the power cable. I thoroughly clean the unit again, but this time a tad harder with a brush. I do this before I give the plastic components a bath, so that most of it gets unstuck before that. The bath consists of mildly hot water, cleaning detergent and anti-grease. While that's going on in the background, I had the time to fix that lens in the meantime. Now I want to thank Josefine for pointing me in the right direction towards a guide from Alex. I have the link to his guide in the description below. First I clean the gears with a toothbrush and soap. This removes any leftover old grease. I then clean out the lens rails which makes the lens slide up and down with soap to do the same. I then proceed by lubricating the bigger gear motor with silicon spray to lubricate it on the inside, making sure the grease gets inside the motor by pushing it inside the holes. I do the same for the other motor spindle on the side of the lens by spraying spray inside the tiny hole. I then let the lens unit stand vertical for half an hour to let the grease do its work on the inside. Back to the components that took a warm bath. Under a ray of water, I clean them even more extensively with a soft side of a scouring sponge. Half an hour has passed and I'm back on that lens. Those gears get lubricated with the use of a tiny brush. I do the same for the lens rails on both sides. Now to close up the lens unit again, clean up the laser eye with some alcohol and hope for the best. With everything cleaned up, it's time to reassemble the unit again. There are however a few things I am going to do. First off that power button was wonky, so I am going to grease everything up with lubrication. Now pushing the power button really sucked, so I need to resolve that issue. I lube it up with silicon spray first, then lubricate it. Same goes for the eject button in the back, just to be sure. And I'm not putting back that scotch tape on the mod chip, so I'm covering it with electrical tape. Not on the mod chip itself, but over it. And I also do some extra cleaning in the nooks with a tissue. Deep cleaned and refurbished. There you have it. Ready to go another round of 30 years into the future. The lid cover closes and opens like new. Any power and eject button do the same. Before I'm going to put this one up for sale, I still need to test its functionality, especially the laser. Well that power button works perfectly now, as you can see. Let's pop in another game disc that I got for free with this unit. There you go, the game boots up with no hiccups. Don't mind the CRT glare on the screen, as this is running in 50Hz instead of 60. Let's hope the new owner is just as happy as I am with the result itself. I want to thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. 
as well as maybe learn something. Be sure to like the video, leave a comment about what you think and a subscribe is always appreciated as it keeps you updated on the latest video releases. And I'll see you on the next video.